My name is Ernest Wamboye. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a minister of the gospel. I am a husband to one Waturi. And, um, and uh, Pastor Mwashigad is going to uh, put up a photo of my family, so you're going to see them in a while. And um, I'm also a father. My eldest daughter is two years old. She turned two last month. And um, amen. And uh, my, my second born is on the way. She's coming in six weeks, huh? <laughs> Amen. So we thank God. We thank God for the gift of children. They are a blessing from God. And that we pray for a safe delivery. Sindio. Amen. Great. So we're going to talk about sexuality today. And I want you to tell your neighbor the struggle is real. Tell your neighbor the struggle is real. Now, ask, no, if I ask your neighbor, is the struggle real? Amen. Amen. And uh, my talk for today is going to be divided into four different parts. And I can see many of you have got pen and paper. That's fantastic. I like to say that the, the faintest ink is greater than the strongest memory. So if you write something down, it sticks with you forever. I wrote every sermon that I had when I was in high school. I got born again in Form 1, and I wrote every sermon that I had from Form 1 up to Form 4. I have it in a thick set of books. It's about half a foot thick. Every sermon that I had changed my life. So I'm glad that you're writing. So my sermon is going to be in four different parts. The first part is going to be called The Reality of the Struggle. That's part one. Part two is going to be The Reason for the Struggle. Part three, the root of the struggle. And finally, part four, the remedy for the struggle. Okay? So four R's so you can remember. The reality of the struggle, the reason for the struggle, the root of the struggle, and the remedy for the struggle. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. May you be honored by everything that I say. I pray for the hearts of everyone in this room that they may be softened to your word, that they may hear you, and that, Lord Jesus, they may not be distracted by the enemy. I pray that, Lord Jesus, you may change them, you may help them understand who you are during this session, and I pray that, Lord Jesus, you'll be glorified as we go through this topic. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to give you guys a story. When I was in high school, something interesting happened to me. I grew up in a Christian background. My mom is an Anglican vicar, so nimelelewa chat, sindio. And uh, I didn't know I was, I didn't know I, I, I needed a savior until I got to high school. In fact, I thought I was a very good guy. At that point, if you approached me and you asked me, Ernest, um, are you going to heaven? I'd be like, Psh, duh. I mean, mini mtoto wapasi. Mini and heaven, like, I'm number one on the line. And I thought God was so proud of me that God would look down and say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Ernest. Which I feel when you're terror you. I felt like that. Until I had the gospel, and when I had the gospel, the gospel told me that not any one of us is righteous before God, and that all our righteousness is like filthy rags before God. And when I had the gospel, I was like, wait, 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 are you saying that me, with all my good deeds, I don't qualify? I, I thought I am number one on heaven's list. The Lord told me, uh uh, you're not even in the list. You need to, first of all, submit yourself to me, repent. You need to turn to me, accept that you're a sinner, and then, honest, depend on my son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice. Then you'll be saved. And so that's what happened to me in Form 1. So in Form 1, it was a game changer in my life, it was a landmark. My life turned around. I understood that I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. And I don't know if any of you have understood that, but I pray that by the end of this session, you will understand that clearly. Now, something significant happened in my first year. I faced my first major temptation. So at the end of every year, we'd go for a trip outside of the country. And so this particular year, we were going to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And we got together, we paid for the trip, we got our passports ready, and Tanzania, Dar es Salaam is a very long trip. If you've gone there by road, you know it can take you a whole day on the road. 
So what did we decide? We decided to stop at Arusha, spend the night, and then the next day wake up, go on to Dar es Salaam. So that's what we did. We got to Arusha and we went to sleep. Now we're staying four guys in a room. Four of us. Now in my room, it was me and a friend of mine named Archie and two other friends. And as soon as our teacher went to sleep, the other two friends woke up and said, Hey, Mode Amelala. Ebu tuende out. Let's go out quickly. Mode Amelala. And at that point, I knew, Ernest, you got born again this year. You shouldn't be doing that. So I told my friends, okay, you guys can go, but me, I'm staying. And my friend Archie was like, okay, me, I'm also staying. So they had two decided to go out, and they got together with other guys, and they were planning to go out clubbing. And we remained in the room, and they told us, Msifunge Mlango, leave the door open so that when we come back, we don't wake you guys up. So that's what we did. We left the door open. Now, our teacher had told us that by three o'clock, we needed to be up because we were leaving with the very first bus going to Dar es Salaam. And so I told three o'clock, you wake up, four o'clock, we leave the hotel. Now, at two o'clock, my friend wakes me up, Archie. Honest, Amka, Amka. And so I wake up and tells me, Honest, kunam to kwa room. I'm like, um, yes, there's four of us in the room. Two of us must be sober, the other two must be drunk. And my friend tells me, no, honest, there's a fifth person in the room. And I'm like, eh? Fifth person? So I sit up. And when I sit up, I see my friends there on the bed. They are drunk. One of them has vomited on the floor. You can just smell alcohol everywhere. And right next to them, seated on the bed, is a prostitute. How do I know she was a prostitute? Well, she was dressed economically, for lack of a better term, eh? And it was the first time I saw a naked woman in my life. She literally had almost no clothes on. And at that moment, you know, I looked at her and I was like, no, Anes, you shouldn't be looking. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's something in me that's telling me, hey, like it in a kapua. Angalia tu kidogo. Angalia tu kidogo. Ute chungulia tu. But there's something telling me, no, Anes, don't look. That's a woman's body. And then I can feel things in my body at that time, eh? You know, I'm a teenager. So I'm feeling some... I'm like, 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 I'm the woman says, Nataka bwana wangu, wapi bwana wangu? Well, like, eh, madam, bwana yako ayuko hapa. Nilifuata bwana yangu hapa kwenye, kwenye hoteli. Alikuwa na vijana hawa melewa, wapi bwana wangu? Nipeni bwana wangu, sasa hivi. So like, uh, madam, we are just high school students. We are, we are 14 years old. Eh? We are not even old enough to be your husbands. Fanyevi, madam, just, just please exit the room. Because if the management finds a prostitute in our room, will be expelled. She was like, Mimi sitoki hapa hadi munipe buwana wangu. Na muskijaribu kunidanganya, ntapiga mayowe. I'll scream. Now I started thinking about that. What if this woman screams, then the hotel management comes, they call the school administration, and then it is on the Daily Nation, page 12. <laughs> school students, drunk and found with Tanzanian prostitutes. I mean, how do you explain that to your mother? Mom, it's not what it looks like. I can explain. <laughs> so we decided to cooperate. And then my friend realized that she did not have her shoes. So we asked her, Wapi viatu viyako? Ah, nime viatuko kwa reception. So we tried to get out. We told her, Sas uende viatu viyako? I love to tafte buwana wako kwa inje. She said, Mimi ham nidanganye. Si toki hapa hadi munipe buwana wango. So my friend comes up with this bright idea. My friend decides, honest, let me go out and look for her shoes. You stay here and watch over her. Tell your neighbor, bad idea. <laughs> so what does he do? He steps out to look for her shoes and he leaves me in this room with this prostitute. And we are seated in silence 
And I can tell that this woman is looking at me. You know, you know that feeling when someone is looking at you even though you're not looking at them? Like, nani wana niangalia? And she's looking at me and so I turn, I look at her and she tells me, haraka haraka, kabla rafiki yako akuje. Paka mojona mesimama, tulia. Onga majibaridi, ngoja di arusi, eh? So, so he said, ati, ati haraka haraka kabla rafiki yako akuje. And then what does she do? She comes and sits next to me and she starts touching my face and I say, Mono go panini. And I am feeling things in my body I have never felt before. <laughs> what did I do? I jumped up from my chair and from my from my bed and I went and sat on the other side. And she followed me, said, Uno go panini. Kuja. Ama you are a virgin, uja ifanya. Usi jali takufunza. Now I want you to ask your neighbor if you're in a similar situation what would you do? Now I'll tell you this, huh? for the very first time in my life, these are the kind of thoughts that are going on through my head. Honest, you are in Tanzania. No one will know. And then furthermore, and then honest, even if it happens, you will never know her. It will be your dirty little secret. And those thoughts were played in my head. And I'm saying that because, guys, when you talk about sexuality, the struggle is real. And this is the reality. We struggle with our sexuality even when we are born again. Someone may think, oh, unless you know you are born again, so you are filled with the spirit, demon chasing spirit. You know, you are just said, get out of Satan, get behind me. But when the rubber meets the road, and many of you may be like, yeah, honest, I know what it means to face such a similar sex, uh, temptation. When the rubber meets the road, you even start questioning whether you're born again or not. Tell your neighbor the struggle is real. I keep telling this to my friend, that if my friend had come five minutes later, I do not know what I would have done with that lady in that room. Because just at that moment when I was battling, battling with my thoughts, my friend walked in with her shoes. Aksema, honest, I found her shoes. And I have never been so relieved to see another man in my life. Karibu, 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 could you come? Yes, yes, aya, mwampati ya toke. Now later I found out that many of my friends who had gone out that night, not only had they gone out drinking, but they had gone out sleeping around with prostitutes. What am I trying to tell you guys? This is the reality of the struggle. Not only do we face a struggle with our sexuality, but secondly, we live in a sexually saturated world. You look all around you and it's in your face. You drive down Thika Road, you see they're advertising a vehicle and what do they do? They throw in their woman's legs. What do the woman's legs have to do with the car? Absolutely nothing. But sex sells, right? You look at this, is it Pwani? Is it Pwani? That, that Pwani oil. I mean, you, you watch the advert and you're wondering what is going on? Or the Sprite advert. Have you seen the Sprite advert? Ati mwanaume anataka kunywa Sprite. So anafuate u mwanamke. Hava nabuwa atoe shirt kila kitu. And then he removes, everything, removes his shirt and you're wondering, surely, is this necessary? Suende tu kwa duke ingine. And if you notice, the man removes his, his, his shirt and everything and he's well built. Ushio na mwanaume ya kuna kitabi kwa hizo adverts. At you moja ni nguvu. I have the fiber. But you know, internet knows they don't need to appeal to you. Internet has become a basic need in this generation. But you'll realize that sex sells. And guys, this is the thing. We live in a sexually saturated world. Now because of that, guys, if you don't learn how to manage your sexuality, the world will manage it for you. 
If you don't develop the necessary skills to manage your sexuality, the world will define it and manage it for you. You need to sit down and say, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm going to make a decision. I, I, I can't walk around, I can't stop every billboard in town. I can't stop every advert on TV. I can't stop every girl walking across me in town, every guy walking across me in town. But guess what? I can choose to do something with my identity such that I can go through life when everyone is saying everyone is doing it. I can be the only one who's standing for Jesus Christ in this generation. Tell your neighbor the struggle is real. This is the reality of the struggle, guys. That we must confront that struggle. I tell you that because personally, guys, I struggled with an addiction to pornography and masturbation when I was in university. I'm not talking about my life before Christ. You may be thinking, no, Anis Kablo Koke. No, no, no. After Nyo Koke, I struggled with an addiction to pornography and masturbation. I was in church, raising my hands, praising God, participating in worship, singing, but I'm struggling. And then it didn't help that the kind of friends that I had are the kind of people you talk about pornography, you talk about masturbation, and they start laughing. Hey, when will them say? When will them say? <laughs> and then you think, ah, to, to Kosawa, to Kosawa, you are hanging out with fools, you'll just become a fool. But, but, warning, eh? Warning. Tell your neighbor, warning. This sermon is going to be offensive, eh? I'm just warning you in advance, eh? It's not going to be unbiblical. I'm just saying it's going to be offensive, eh? You know, when Jesus preached, kuna venye waltaka kumua. Some of you may feel like that after this. But I'd rather give you the truth right now that will save your soul, amen? I struggled for so long. And guys, I know what it means to belong to a Christian congregation where you can lift up your hands in worship, but deep down, you've got struggles that you don't want anyone to know. And some of you may be here saying, honest man, that's my struggle. I'm laughing, I'm smiling, but honest, I, I am addicted. I can't get out. Some of you are saying, honest, you know what? I experimented with my sexuality in high school. Now I can't stop. Some of you may be saying, honest, if I even told you the things I'm struggling with, you know, I'm even afraid because the people here, these guys would laugh at me. Honest, I'm struggling with lesbianism. I'm struggling with homosexuality. It's not a laughing matter. Or some of you may be saying, honest, man, ah, it's my phone. This smartphone, this, this smartphone, man, every time I get data, I say I'm born again, but if you go through my phone, man, I'm born again. Tell your neighbor the struggle is real. Maybe saying, oh, but honest, you know what, honest, I don't think I'm struggling with any of that. Okay, well, good for you, but let me ask you, if I was to take these cables that the sound team has really put up nicely and I would get the end of it, an HDMI cable, you know, high definition screens, and let's say you had an HDMI slot on your head and I'd stick that cable there, I would see every thought that has gone through your head for the past one month when you're talking, sleeping up, down, eating, talking, in school, out of school, everywhere. Every single thought. How many people here would say, show my thoughts, they are holy, holy, holy. How many people here? Past two weeks? Two weeks? Okay, past, past, past. <laughs> Now let me tell you something funny about, you know, about what you just said. Oh, Mwashigadi, Mwashigadi should raise his hand. You know, you, you, you know something funny about that? I was in the same exact position where my standard of purity was based on a human being. And that's what we do. We look up to other people as our standard so that when they fail, we can excuse ourselves to do the very thing. It's not time for you to point at Mwashigadi. He's a sinner saved by the grace of God. And so to look at him and say, oh, Mashigadi, you should raise your hand. Why? So that the day he falls, you can justify yourself. That's wrong. Even if I sit for the past one hour and none of the pastors raise your hands, it's none of your business. You know why? You'll stand before God on judgment day as an individual. You won't say, oh, Pastor Jackson, could you need to attend the youth convention? I'm going to check. 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 I'
Uwe ati what? But I'm here to tell you this guys, even though you struggle, you can be free. The struggle is real, but our God is greater. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about the reason for the struggle. Why do we struggle? The reason for the struggle. Reason number one, why we struggle. Distrust in God. Distrust in God. And if you're writing it, fantastic. God bless you. Distrust in God. There's, there's a funny thing that happens among young people when they're growing up, especially when you encounter Jesus. Um, the world seems to tell you the real fun is out there. You guys in the faith, munakosa raha. Raha iko inje. And so what you do is that you start to compartmentalize your life. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and, in, and he will make your path straight. But you think about that, you go like, ah, God, you know what? I think I'm going to let you be God over my finances. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are God over my health. Amen. You are God over my parents. You are God over my family. You are God over everything. God over my sexuality. Um, I've got that area covered. You know, I, I'm kind of in control. You know, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I, want, to, I, want, I want to give you an, an illustration. And I'm going to ask for a volunteer to just come up here. Can, let me have a gentleman come up here. And when you come up here, just bring one of those chairs. Yeah, just come, come, come. Just come up and bring one of those chairs. So I just come, come, come. Now just come with the shoes. Come with the shoes. Yeah. Okay. This chair is going to represent the throne of my life. Huh? Whoever sits on this chair makes the decisions in my life. All right? What's your name, sir? Victor. Victor is going to play the role of Jesus Christ. Okay? Ernest, Ernest is going to play, play the role of Ernest. Okay? And um, this is Ernest's life. Whoever sits on this throne connect, rather, uh, whoever sits on this throne controls Ernest's life. Before Ernest knew who Jesus Christ was, Ernest thought he was a pretty good guy. Ernest thought he was the boss, he was in control. Ernest thought he's going to heaven. Psh, I mean, Ernest thought he's better than other people. And then Ernest had the gospel. You're a sinner. What? Saved by grace. What? Through faith. You need to get born again. Me? Age? Boss? You mean I need a savior? You know what? I accept I am a sinner. I need a savior. Jesus Christ, you died for my sins. Come and take control. Take control. Come on. You sit on the throne of my life. All decisions I make are through you. Why? You are my savior. So who is on the throne now? Christ Jesus. Now, anything that Ernest wants, he goes through Christ Jesus. So this is my life plane right here. So I go like, Maze Jesus una cheki, mapero wangu maze wana struggle, staki wapate divorce, maze I pray for their marriage, you are God over my family, please take control, you are Lord, you are God. Maze God, maze examina ka, maze ni mesoma, but I'm a bit anxious, maze please help me, help me understand the things that I've been taught, maze you are God of my exams, you are Lord, you are God. Maze God na cheki ni mesota, maze I can need some money, please just pray, I, I mean just mtumwa and tumetuka impesa hivi, maze I need to just get to church, maze nataka kwa ten fellowship, maze you are God, you are Lord, you are God. Maze God, maze my health mean I'm sick, maze but I trust you, you are Jehovah Rapha, you are the healer man, I know by your stripes I am healed, you are Lord, you are God. Maze God. Kuno dema nataka kukamuhume. Unaonaje? Check who dem ni best yangu eh? Who dem ni best yangu? Fanya hivi eh? Fanya hivi eh? Check 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 who dem moto kama pasi tena ile amaka. Check check. Check check eh? Check who dem ana come ana come home ni prayer partner tunafanya Bible study eh? Uh-huh. Fanya hivi eh? Jesus unajua no, wewe Jesus woni kati afanye hivi acha nikisho eh? Hebu 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 kidogo check 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 watch who dem who dem ni best yangu eh? Chini mefanya, ni mepanga, anakamu huo. Bebu, ebu songa kidogo, songa kidogo. Be, Jesus, what you kwa space more, bebe kwa ikiti. Kwa nujua ikiti li kwanga yangu kwanza, ebu fanyi, fanyi, ebu songa hivi, cheki, fanya, fanya, Jesus, eh, cheku ude, ude, ebu, 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 
Najua hebu si mama anga tuapo kiasi eh na kama eh check check usiende mbali eh 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 hata uko sema niaje baby eh hey, poor city come 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 and then two weeks later mazia me break my heart jesus ni saidie ni saidie ni saidie jesus ni saidie ni saidie Are you seeing what I'm doing? I have compart- I have made my life into different compartments. And so instead of submitting my life wholly to God, I have given him fractions of my life and I dare call him my savior. If he's not lord of all, he's not lord at all. Jesus Christ wants supreme control over your life, including those difficult areas. And what we keep doing is that we keep chasing Jesus out when it's convenient and then when it's inconvenient we have him back right okay let's appreciate him as he takes his seat do you trust the lord do you trust the lord with your sexuality now that example that i gave you is a real example and i'm going to give you a story when i joined when i joined campus in my first year I went on Facebook and what did I write? I wrote home alone bored. And the first thing I got was an inbox from a certain girl, Ali comment, akandika, aka like kwanza, aka comment akandika, sweet you go home, sini kam. Nikachekio comment kacheki, wa! Hapa niki reply, mabeste wa chacho ataniingia. So nika slide into her DM eh. <laughs> Nikam show eh ni aje ni aje come 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 kuja And that moment the holy spirit is telling me honest who dey man come could do I'm like ah shit tuna watch too much movie The holy spirit tell me honest who dey make come utajua ujui I'm like ah who dey ni best yangu in fact tuna hang out and the conviction of the holy spirit was upon me when I went to school we had a bible study And in that Bible study, hey, the guys here, hey, 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 the guys here, hey, pay attention. I'm here for like 30 more minutes, huh? then you can keep on talking, sir. So, I told her to come home, and when I told her to come home, what happened? Uh, I went to school, and when I went to school, I met my friends, and my friends are asking about the plans for the weekend. Mna faya nini weekend? So, kila msa nasema plans zake, kafika kwangu, honest, mna faya nini? Kisema, ah, mi kuna beshte angwa na kam. Beshte mgani? Juu, sisi, sisi, hapa. I'm like ah uh, beste flani tu eh hey, anis ni dem I'm like eh hey, boss uta mess I'm like ah bana mbona mna ni judge mbona mna ni judge mimi najijua bana mimi niko poa mimi niko niko na breaks eh wacha niko nyinyi wa kristo you know this this why christ this why the church is suffering eh mko wa gumu eh this is the problem with the church the problem the church you christians are so judgmental and they walked out very angry And there was this girl who walked up to me and told me, "Hey, Anes, able slow down. Check it, check it, check it. We are not judging you. We just want to tell you if you're going to live according to the scriptures, the scriptures are clear, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality." Ephesians 5:3. "Anes, a hint of sexual immorality. What you and this girl are going to do, you're going to mess up." I told this girl, "Do you know who I am? Do you know my mom is an Anglican vicar? Do you know I was in the CU? Do you know do you know she told me chi, 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 I don't know who you are I don't care who you are I don't care if you're Mother Teresa Billy Graham and the Pope combined I don't care. You are going to mess up. Don't think because you've been in church for long that you have some special set of anointing concerning your sexual purity. And that girl's words hit me like a truck. And I went home and I called the girl and come check check you scam scam She like ah mazemi na kam come eh check us kam us kam like ntak show badai ma pero ko home do sisa ko home do bro ko home do nini ba wacha ni kam come check us kam ntak show badai and she was a bold girl you know ale made mo nambia us kam alafu ana kam dio na uchuta fanya nini so to by the way us kam stack fungulia mlango kusema saa so i went to sleep and when i went to sleep at around half past midnight i had someone on the door Niliamka nikisema oh my gosh akudem akudem wow 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 so my spirit is crying my spirit is like oh my gosh what has she done how can she come now 12:30 but meanwhile my flesh is doing the bazokizo <laughs> that time god god she yet you may come me she she me jaribu me jaribu yet you may come 
Whatever happens from now on is not my nilimpiga. Si nilimpiga, sulisikia. Mi Si nilimsho, si nilimsho, si nilimsho. Bas. And I went to open the door. When I went to open the door, my dad walked in. Yeah. Shona mwanaume ameshikwa doing the wrong thing. When I saw my dad, eh, usi wangu ilikuwa imekauka. Ka voice yangu kaka kwa kasoprano. So, oh, dad, dad, umefika. <laughs> oh, karibu, karibu. And I'm thinking, wow, 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 wow. And my dad tells me, oh, Anne, you know the trip ended early, so I just decided to come home. I'm thinking, hey, hey karibu tu. <laughs> and I kept thinking, what if he had found me in this house with this girl? What am I trying to tell you guys? You need to trust God because God is protecting you from things you cannot see. Some of you say like, oh, let him show me then I'll trust him. No, it's a walk of faith. Trust him and then he'll show you. You need to live your Christian walk by faith. You need to say that, you know what, I'm going to preserve myself pure until marriage. I'm going to wait until marriage. It doesn't matter the mistakes I've made in the past. Starting today, I'm going to say I'm going to live my life until marriage by faith. Trust that God is faithful. Now let me tell you something interesting about that girl who walked up. Remember that girl who walked up to me in school and warned me? That girl is now my wife of six years. Did I know she would be my wife? No. Bona, jinko tu na umanga. Eh, ni mwana dem. Ni mwana dem. Let me tell you guys, if you don't live your life in a sexually pure way, some of you may close doors in future marriages that you do not know. There are fantastic future marriages that God has aligned for you, but guess what? You may never see them because you're saying that all I want is to satisfy myself now, 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 now. Do you trust God? Ask your neighbor, do you trust God? The second reason for the struggle is desperation. Desperation. Now where does this desperation come from? This desperation comes from peer pressure. The Bible says in Proverbs 13:20, whoever walks the wise shall become wise, but a companion of fools shall suffer harm. Can you believe that there are actually people in your life that the Bible calls fools? Yet, yet, kuna what, there are some fools in your phone book. Do you know that? There are some fools who are your friends on Facebook. There are some fools that you follow on Twitter and they follow you back. The Bible does not mean, it says, whoever walks with the wise shall become wise, but a companion of fools shall suffer harm. You know what fools will do to you? They start telling you, by the way, you are the only one. You are the only one who's ex- experimenting with your sexuality. By the way, utakufa. You start getting desperate. And you start getting desperate, you start looking around, and let me tell you, this is the funny thing about when you hear something, um, it's, it's like um, when you, I don't know if anyone here has, has, has planned to buy a car, when you want to buy a car. And so you make up your mind, I'm going to buy a Toyota Premio. You make up your mind. All of a sudden, from the day you make up your mind, you see Toyota Premios everywhere. Everywhere. Kai nezi Premios iko nyingi. Wah! He's, ah! If I couldn't write premium, by the way, kill him to a premium. The same thing happens to you. You told, by the way, everyone is having sex. Hiya, everyone. All of a sudden, everywhere you go, everyone is having sex. And you start feeling you are the only. You start getting desperate. I'll tell you this, eh? In all my life, eh? <laughs> I have never gone to any hospital in this city or in this country. Or maybe I've not traveled enough. I've traveled to a few countries. Even in those countries, I've not been to any hospital, eh? Where ni mecheki ka ambulance kame kam. We, 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 kafunguka, kastrecha kakatolewa, mugonja katoka, anatitemeka. After that, say, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Had you have sex, had you have sex, had you have sex? Mpati emergency sex right now. Nani ya shiwa naivyo? Emergency. Desperation will start telling you that you will die. Let me tell you this. You will die without the presence of God. If there's anything you'll die without, it's the favor of God in your life. You can go for days without food. You will die. You can go for days without water. You'll die. No man has ever died for not having sex. And at times you just need to take a seat back and ask yourself, what is everyone saying about this whole thing about sex? What is this thing? And your friends start telling you, you know, honest, eh? you see, we need to practice. Eh? By the time to engage marriage, 
tuko shambamba tumeprako tuko poa uh, let me just counter that argument with a few thoughts huh? number one, what does the bible call sex outside of marriage cause it fornication how can fornication prepare you for marriage let's start there how can fornication prepare you for marriage secondly i'll tell you this as a married person sex is a gift for marriage it is not an audition for dating eh? I need to get I need to I need to audition eh so you invite a few candidates eh and they sit for the audition ebu chapini audition no you didn't pass next you know you didn't pass we will call you after you. next ah tumekupata now you are up for the role eh no usituangushe ukituangusha utapata mtu mwingine and you realize in the world the whole pursuit of sexuality is out of performance and out of a way to try and impress one another which does not work in the context of god's economy in purity sex is not a way to outdo one another it's a way to give to one another that's why it's a gift for the marriage bed you wait you get there and there's no competition and so this whole idea i need to get there when i am ready no let me tell you that's why you are married for life to practice all you want and to prepare for all you want bwana sifiwe bwana sifiwe you've got all your life ahead of you I've just had Pastor Jackson say as if you were sana amen God bless you Pastor Jackson my gosh Secondly I'll tell you this the people who tell you that you need to practice sex in order to be prepared for marriage they falsely think okay that good sex will make a good marriage That's a lie It's the opposite a good marriage will make good sex Sex does not produce good marriages Sex is the product of a good marriage. If you want to improve your sex life even as a married couple, you don't focus on trying to, you know, look for ways and trying things that don't want all these theatrics. No, you know what you do? You are kind to your spouse. You treat them well. You bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It becomes a product. Don't be deceived, guys. There's a lot of lies out there. Amen. The root of the struggle So we talked about the reality, we talked about the reason, let's talk about the root. Deep down there's a bigger reason and that's what I'm calling the root of the struggle. Reason number one is we don't understand the gospel. We don't understand the gospel. What is the gospel? I'm going to try and explain this through an analogy of an exam. Some of you may have heard it, but I like it because um it it comes out clear. Now ask your neighbor have you failed an exam before? Ushanguka exam. Ile unanguka hadi umechafuka eh? Now I was bad in physics eh when I was in high school. In a particular entry exam I scored 20%. 20. Bani kaji console juku kulikuwa na msabi dunga 8% eh. Jembe ah ande sauko kubaya vile. Nikajiambia I will read 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 until I get I'll put my feet in cold water hang out with the choppies I did that in the next exam the midterm exam do you know what I scored scored another 20% cuz consistency is key isn't it <laughs> My teacher his name was Mr Manza he had a very heavy kamba accent eh unjui ile kamba accent ile nzito paka unadhani msana twenge eh ile wa 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 he had a very heavy kamba accent so he gave me my paper i remember he looked at my second paper 20% he was so angry at me and he said to me kinjana how can you get a pound how can you get a pound sasa muzazi ameuza ngombe kusomesha ingine sasa hiki chwa yako kazi yake ni kubeba tu meno <laughs> yani <laughs> you know how our 8 for 4 teachers just get away with emotional abuse they just emotionally abuse you right left center and they get away with it they get away jaribu kufanya hivyo state oh 
Nafungua jela. And you know just like yani he physics this physics is so hard. Yani yani mi, yani mimi ni ngombe. Sisi bitu hii fizu. And guys, no matter how hard I tried, I could not pass physics. People say at you know honest I dropped physics for me. Physics dropped me. <laughs> it was that hard. There is nothing I could do to pass physics. I eventually tried to go ahead with it to KCSC. I think I got I got a I got a B. I was so glad a B. I was like but still if you compare to what the A's that others had gotten, it was nothing. And guys, it's the same thing, huh? You are sitting an exam called life, okay? From the moment you are born to the day you die, you are sitting an exam called life. Now let me ask you, what do you think you'll score in this exam called life after you die and you stand before your maker? What percentage do you think you'll score? I'll tell you this, huh? The Bible says this about you. The Bible says we all fall short of God's glory. The Bible says the best of us is like filthy rags. The Bible says even if you took Billy Graham and the Teresa and the Pope combined and made them sit the exam called life, the best they would score is a D. You and I fall short of God's glory. We sin, guys. And God is so holy that even our most righteous deeds are putrid to him. No one can pass the exam called life and that's bad news. You know it's bad news because a holy God cannot stand in the presence of sin. And if we die and face our maker and we are full of sin, guess what? That means there's eternal separation from us. That's hell, guys. That's bad news. But bad news is only a precedent for good news. And this is the good news. That Jesus Christ came on earth. God himself said, I will sit that same exam that they failed. He came down on earth. He was born like us, suffered like us, tempted like us, went through every exam question just like you and I. And like you and I who fail, he never failed a single question. 100% is what he got. He passed the exam called life. The only human being to pass the exam called life. And he handed his paper to God. And guess what? Your paper was also handed at the same time. Now before Jesus handed the paper, this is what he did. He took his paper where he had scored 100%. He rubbed his name and he wrote your name. He took the other paper where you had scored a pound. He rubbed your name and what did he do? He wrote his name. He presents both papers to God the Father. God sees the paper and he goes like, whoa, 100%, well done, good and faithful servant. You deserve to be praised, elevated, glorified, justified, sanctified. But whose name does he see there? Whose name? He sees your name. And all the blessings and all the benefits that Jesus deserves are pushed over to you. He looks at the other paper and what does he see? Whoa, a pound. Lying, thieving, blaspheming, conniving, adulterer, fornicator, filthy thoughts, falling short of my glory. And all the wrath and all the punishment that you and I deserve, he reads the name. Whose name does he see there? Jesus. All the punishment that you and I deserve are transferred to Jesus Christ. There is a divine exchange. Do you know what happened to him, guys? Do you know how he paid the punishment for your pound? They stripped him naked. After they stripped him naked, the Romans had a weapon that was about one foot long with leather strands at the end. And at the tip of the leather strands were metal balls and sharp bones. He was totally naked, tied him on a pole. They swung it and they hit him with it. And the metal ball sank into his skin. His bones sank in and they pulled out the flesh. And he began to scream. And I want you to imagine if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. All along, for three years of ministry, Jesus Christ has been having his head above the water. For three years in ministry, Jesus Christ has been in control. He's been the guy who's been answering the Pharisees. He's been the guy who's been giving them the last word. He's been the guy doing the miracles. All of a sudden, he's screaming. And you realize that it's over. And that was one, and two, and three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and they flipped him over. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. 
39 times they hit the savior 39 times when they were done with him he was bleeding like a tap he was screaming he could not scream anymore the piece of pieces of flesh were hanging out you could see his bones and he fulfilled the prophecy in Psalm 22 saying i can count all my bones they have whipped me dogs have encircled me and what did they do they put a crown of thorns on his head put a purple robe on him and they made fun of him hail the king of the jews and then they put a heavy cross on his back and they made him walk up that hill and he's struggling to walk up that hill and the doctor will tell you when you've lost so much blood and so much water your body gets into hypovolemic shock it tries to protect itself from death and that's what happened to jesus his body shut down what did he do he collapsed and so they got simon of cyrene to carry the cross for him as they dragged him up that cross up that hill and as they got to the top they pierced his side with a roman nail a roman nail was six inches long through his wrist through his other wrist through his legs and he was hanging there in front of all israel naked forget about the movies where they have a nice cloth covering him he was totally naked his private parts showing out to the entire world his own mother looking at him bleeding still fulfilling the prophecy of Psalm 22 they have pierced my hands they have pierced my feet and crucifixion killed you by suffocation you're in this position you try to breathe it's difficult because gravity is working against your diaphragm so the only way to breathe is to push your body up so you're trying to breathe and it's hard and air is leaving your lungs slowly and so the only way to get a good breath is to push your legs up but you can't push your legs up because they've been nailed to the cross the only distance you have is one of the bended knees and if you bend your knees you're whipped back as scratches against the wood and the splinters sink into the skin and he hung there for three hours the air leaving his lungs the one who gave you the breath of life now the breath of life is leaving him and he's hanging there and he's saying i'm dying for every sin for every youth that is going to sit in DC Zimmerman on the 8th of August 2018 for all their sins I'm hanging on this cross and he gave up his spirit Jesus Christ died so that you would live if you understand the gospel if you understand what it took to save your soul you'll be like Jesus you gave me everything you gave me everything what do you want from me and he tells you i want you to follow me which human being would say no i'll tell you only a proud one only a proud one what do you want from me i want you to live for me with your sexuality i want you to wait until marriage if today you owe the government 8 million shillings and they've come to arrest you and then anes wamboye comes along and says eh 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 achana na eh i pull out a checkbook 8 million your debt is cleared and you're like oh anes thank you so much i will pay you back i said ah you don't need to pay me it's for free would you be glad what about the next day you found me in town and i'm like hey maze and you're like hey anes what's wrong maze 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 wallet yangu imeibwa ni said you tuna 50 bob nifike home would you help me with 50 bob you would why because you'd be like unless the debt you cleared for me was so huge what is 50 bob guys the debt that jesus cleared for you is so big what is waiting until marriage such a small price to pay for the savior the second root of the struggle is spiritual oppression Now I'll tell you something about my life when I was in campus when I was struggling with pornography and I was struggling with addiction to masturbation I just thought it is a physical struggle I thought ah it's just a struggle on the outside it's a struggle to do with my friends my my entertainment my out all these things I never thought it was a spiritual struggle until one day something happened and I share this to you guys as a true story and I wish my wife was here because you'd even ask her afterwards she was she, she was involved in this story that I'm going to tell you I went to sleep one day in my hostel and when I went to sleep I felt a presence in the room a very dark presence I could have sworn there was someone in my room so I thought it was my neighbor I thought I'd left my door open so I called out they didn't respond so I woke up switched on the lights eh and I was like eh I couldn't to a room 
and I've locked the door. And I'm like, hey, what's that? I went back to sleep. The next time I go to sleep, I can feel there's someone in the room and I tend to can even hear footsteps. And I'm like, hey, shh. Kuna mtu kwa room. And I'm so sure I closed the door. Na, 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 na nilikuwa kwa bed sit. Unajua zile bed sit ndogo. Zile ndogo. Like, hatu wezi change your mind and lazima utoke inje. <laughs> ilikuwa bed sit ndogo. Yani ukitaka kufreshen the room na chiu 2 pk. Unajua? <laughs> But maze kuna msenda ni ya room na mimi. I'm like, maze ni nani? Niki kanyage hivi na shika meza, bafu, uji. I'm like, musi yako kwa hii room aje? And I remember one day I opened my eyes and the room was dark, darker than usual. And I'm like, ay, hapana. So what did I do? I went back to sleep. The next time I felt that person standing over my bed looking at me like this. And I was like, nifungue machama nisifungue. <laughs> Lakini nikifungua alafu ni muone sasa. Guy, wacha tu nisifungue. Ayuko hapo, ayuko. The next time, I felt that person on my mattress. I had no idea this thing was related to my porn and masturbation addiction. So during the day, I'm just fooling around with sin. The next night, I felt that guy on top of my chest, choking me. And some of you are looking at me, you're like, Anis, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been through that. And I could feel someone choking me and laughing at me. And, in, and, and it's like, they know me. You know, they're laughing at me, it's like, I know you. <laughs> like, I know you. And they are choking me, and I'm struggling to breathe. And I'm like, <sighs> and I can feel, and I'm like, am I awake or am I asleep? But I can still feel this thing. And I'm, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. I said, no, let me get another opinion. I went and talked to one of my theologian friends. My pastor told me, oh, my oh, honest, don't worry, that's just a demon. <laughs> I was like, just a demon? <laughs> I told me, honest, when you fool around with certain sinful, there are certain sins that the Bible allocates or relates to demonic activity. Murder, witchcraft, and one of them is sexual immorality. If you look throughout scripture, you find that those three sins, murder, witchcraft, sexual immorality, they're often associated with demonic activity. And my friend was telling me, honest, whatever it is, you're fooling around you to stop. That thing would come and choke me and choke me and choke me. And one time I remember, I just told the Lord, Lord, I'm tired. I need this thing to get out. And it got to a point where I realized I was no longer in control of my sexuality. Before I'd watch porn, masturbate when I want, but now I realize I was a slave. I couldn't stop. And guys, I'll tell you this, all addictions are linked to spiritual oppression. That's the root of the struggle. How do you get out? I'll tell you how I got out. We've come to the end, the remedy for the struggle. I'm going to give you how to get out, then I'm going to finish the story telling you how the spiritual oppression left my life. How do you get out? I'm going to give you an acronym, CRACK, C-R-A-C-K, CRACK, CRACK. Number one, you need to confess, confess. That's what C stands for, the first C, confess. Why confess? The Bible says in James 16, confess your sins one to another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Sexual sin thrives in secrecy and anonymity. If you are struggling with it, the best way is to expose it. Don't think that you'll overcome it by keeping quiet. You need to come to someone you trust and tell them, this is my struggle. Now it needs to be someone you trust so that you don't tell them that they go broadcasting it on Facebook and Twitter. And so, confess. David said in Psalm 32, when I kept quiet, my bones wasted in, within me. But when I confessed... I got life again. The Bible says in Psalms 28, 13, whoever, rena whoever, whoever renounces his sin and confesses them finds mercy. But whoever refuses to confess, okay, it eats you in on the inside. And so I had to confess. And guys, you have no idea how difficult it is to confess sin in church. I came to church and I'm like, Leon, you want to confess God. Mazo nangalevi ma spiritual warrior. I said, wah, happen you want to confess? God, what you want to confess next week? 
Next week nafikia hivi Bible study nasikia mse praise God my brothers praise God my sisters the Lord woke me up at 3 in the morning I was just seeing dreams and visions speaking in tongues riba baba mosheri like guy God what what to confess next week Next week I'm going to come like praise God my brothers you know I've just been doing the book of Habakkuk and I'm like guy who reads Habakkuk And I kept postponing this thing ah next week next week, the Lord told me what are you afraid of I'm like God I'm afraid of people thinking I'm not spiritual I'm like but you're not spiritual Many of the times we struggle to confess because we want people to think of us in a different light Mimi mtoto wa pastor no one should think I'm struggling I am a present worship leader no one should think I'm struggling I serve in the ushering team no one should think I'm struggling I attended the seminar no one should think confess your sin When you confess your sin you expose the enemy And so I confessed my sin I went and told my friends guys pray for me I'm struggling with porn I'm struggling with masturbation And one of my brothers put his hands on me and said brother honest me too Mazesi nilibambika Ati what ati hata wewe Hi kitu nilijua siko peke yangu Kumbe hata wewe chingua ati ah hi kitu nilijua nilijua But you know just because you're many you're not safe I'll tell you what confession does confession takes away the guilt and the accusation of the enemy Because the enemy accuses you when you're a Christian who's fully in sexual sin that guilt falls away are repent repent means turn around repent means you're going in this direction you stop you turn and go in this other direction repent means you agree with god that sin is sin you don't start saying how far is too far you've already gone too far by asking that question repent means that the bible is your standard for morality not pastor ernest or pastor mwashigadi Repent means that you look to Jesus, you don't look to your bishop. <laughs> repent means that you trust Jesus to help in your salvation work. Do you agree with God that sin is sin in your life? The next one, A, avoid. Avoid. Jesus said if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your hand causes you to sin, chop it off. Such a powerful metaphor. Then he says you would rather get into heaven maimed than to hell with your whole body. What is he trying to say? Find out the things that are causing you to sin. Some of you will be free from the struggle of sin if you just leave certain WhatsApp groups. You avoid them. Some of you will be free if you just stop picking up some calls at, at night. <laughs> some of you will be free from sin if you just stop if you just unfriend some people on Facebook. Your struggle will go away. Some of you will be free if you just decide by the way I'm going to I, I, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to stop watching movies and series for a whole month. For me I got into that kind of addiction because of my entertainment. And the Lord told me unless your entertainment will bring you down. And I had to be very careful. I had to avoid it. The Lord told me get rid of it. I deleted over 20 GB of movies and series. You know to be free. The next C company. Company The Bible says 1 Corinthians 15:33 bad company corrupts good morals. Your company will determine your struggle. If you have solid company they will help you overcome. And finally K, the knowledge of the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 9 and 11 says how can a young man keep his way pure by living according to your word? I've hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Hide the word of God in your heart it will protect you. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity of greed because it's improper for God's holy people. 2 Timothy 2:22 flee the evil desires of youth pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Matthew 6:33 seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all these things shall be added unto you. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. The word of God will act as a siren and the Holy Spirit will help you. But imagine in the heat of temptation the Holy Spirit comes to your mind and he only finds John 3:16. And say mwa wachana tu tutafanya counseling baadaye. Now, I'll finish by telling you guys, I did all those things and one day when I was praying the Lord delivered the spiritual oppression. I remember I was praying and I fell on the ground and that same attack that used to come to me at night it came to me during the day. 
And I remember I told God, God, I am so tired of sin, get it off. And I prayed, and I felt something leave my body. It felt like it was being sucked up by a spiritual vacuum. Eh? It like something sucked it out, and it left my body. And I remember the day it left, it was the last day I struggled with porn and masturbation. I didn't know that I was under a demonic attack. If you're a Christian, you may not be demonic possessed, but you can be demonically oppressed. If you're not a believer, you can be possessed. If you want to read more about that story, I came with my books. My book is Holy Joe. They go for 200 shillings. They've been sold out there. Please grab a copy, okay? Grab a copy, it will help you. And at this moment, I just want us to pray. Just go before the Lord. What is he saying to you? What is God asking you to do? Is God asking you to confess your sin? Is God asking you to repent? Is God asking you to avoid? Is God asking you to check your company? Is God asking you to increase your knowledge of the word of God? God wants a pure generation. God wants a pure generation. And you are that generation. If you've fallen in sin, God forgives you of all your sin. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. It doesn't matter if you had an abortion. It doesn't matter if you have had sex outside of marriage, if you're struggling. God says today your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for these young ones. May you bless them. May you sanctify them. May you help them to walk in purity. Let them realize that, Father, your plans for them are perfect and that no weapon forged against them shall prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.